So I'm starting the recording, so we can start the meeting January 7th, 2019, Diversity Inclusion Chaos Workgroup Meeting. The agenda that we have proposed is to look at the action items, see how they have progressed since last time, and then uh, review our core contributors, see if we need to update our README. The main focus today should be the uh, goals for this year. And then if we have any open poll requests or issues to talk about, and then lastly, to determine who facilitates and takes notes next week. Any additions, changes? Do, do we want to focus the meeting on the goals given that Emma's not here and she's been sort of driving that effort? There are two, two, two things that are on my mind. One okay. is that with her reducing her involvement, I think we just need to move forward. And what she has done so far is a good template she's given us, but I think we need to be able to move this forward ourselves. Okay, that's fair. And the, the other issue is that she has edit rights to the document, so we'll have to work on a copy of the document. Hmm. Okay. Maybe, uh, so yeah. I hate working on copies of documents because things get quickly out of, out of sync. Um, can we get edit rights on that document before we do too much with it? I mean, I know she's she's out, but I think we I think we need to get edit rights on it if we're going to proceed with that. I mean, we could okay. leave comments on it, but um, I really hate to work on a copy of the doc because then we just end up with two copies of the doc, and then she could be working offline in the other one, and I don't know. Usually ends badly. Okay. I'm writing a comment on the issue, our issue 123, uh, to ask Emma if she could give us edit permission. Okay, cool. So all that as an action item. Perfect. Okay, to the action items that we have from the previous meeting. Uh, Nicole, the first three are yours. Um, yeah. How is, so how it looks going? like I, sure. So it looks like I started from the bottom up. Um, so I, I started to draft the, um, the proposal for OSLS. And one of the things that one of the questions that I came across <clears throat> as I started to draft this was, um, I know that we've been spending a lot of time on the objectives for 2019 and what we really want to dive into there. How much of the session at OSLS do we want to spend what do we want that to be? Do we, do we, how much of the session do we want to spend talking about our insights thus far and, and where we are, what, you know, how much work we've done to date, almost as an overview and talking about the work that we've done and how much do we want to open it up and um, have the audience give us their input in, into the objectives and have it almost be a, for lack of a better word, a, a working session or an interactive session and provide us with their input in terms of the objectives that we've been developing. So as I was, as I was writing the, the abstract, I thought, do we, do we want to have it be more where we talk about what the objectives are that we've been working on, or do we want to, do we want it to be more interactive 
with the audience and have them input into it and, and go and and I'm heading to the point of at the end I then say get involved and participate in this work group and I'm thinking well if we want them to participate with us then maybe it's better to make it in, interactive right where where it's a discussion where we get them involved and they're more apt to participate in the work group in 2019 so what what um i want i wanted to to ask ask you guys in this or, or folks in this meeting about that i mean i'm i'm and especially with matt saying gee it doesn't have to be very long um you know, I'm, I'm basically, you know, ready to wrap it up. I just want your input into what we want this to be, and then I'll just, I'll just basically finish it up and hit hit send on it here. Here's the link to, to to have you input on the on the abstract. So I think the most value for people at the leadership summit would be to give them an overview of what we have right now, what we've been working on, and then to discuss with them how that makes sense to them, how they can use it, and what questions and feedback they have. Quick question, are we submitting this as a, a talk or a tutorial? Does the, does the Leadership Summit have both? I'm trying to remember. I haven't been to one in a couple of years. I think it does. I'd have to look again, but they have that in birds of a feather too. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm remembering back to what we did in, I think it was Napa, Matt, and, and we did more of a presentation there. Um, With you so there are two types of session. There's a presentation session and a panel discussion session. Oh yeah, new tutorials. And they're only 30 to 40 minutes. Um, although I think since we have, hmm. who will, uh, let me back up a little bit. Who's gonna present this? Nicole, are you gonna be there? Uh, I believe, yes, that I will be there. Okay. But not actually, yes, yes, I, yes, I will be there. Okay. So how about a panel discussion where we talk about what we've done and then engage with the audience on the questions they have and feedback? Mm -hmm. That way it allows everyone who is on the DNI work group who is at the conference to sit up front. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think that would be good. And I think the abstract, we can be, at this point, we can be fairly, fairly generic about it, right? We can talk about, you know, how we're going to talk about the, you know, what we've done within the diversity and inclusion working group and diversity metrics and uh, get audience feedback or something. I mean, I think yep. we can be pretty, pretty simple about it. I think so too. Like identifying points to move forward with, like give the overview and then identifying kind of what the future holds. I think yeah. I well with that. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And then once it, once it gets accepted, we can figure out exactly how to structure the panel and what questions to ask and yep. how we want to talk about it. So I know that, um, so as the risk, you know, the risk group, they're going to be submitting, as this is kind of getting started in 2019, they're going to be submitting a birds of a feather session, which is really just about kind of capacity building. And then growth, maturity, and decline. I'm pretty sure they're going to be submitting a presentation because at that point, they should have some prototyping done. Mm -hmm. on some of their focus areas and they just like to kind of demonstrate that is there is there even i don't see a place to submit birds of a feather even 
Well, I just, I had the assumption <laughs> that there was <laughs> birds of a feather and it came up in the meeting at nine o'clock or, you know, the meeting just 30 minutes ago. Yeah. Well, as far as session types, it doesn't, it doesn't have okay. birds of a feather. That doesn't mean they won't have them. Yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty skeptical about birds of a feather. I actually tend to think they don't tend to be well attended. Okay. That's, they've, They've worked well for chaos, at least in the past. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you if you get if you recruit people for your birds of a feather ahead of time, they can. Yeah. Work. Agreed. I generally I generally don't bother to go to birds of a feather sessions. Yeah, and I think the idea with the risk one with birds of a feather is that there really isn't a group there yet. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, that's a, a a good point of trying to recruit to some degree. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, um, I know how to finish this up then, so Wonderful. I will, I will hit send on this quickly after this meeting. Um, with the other two, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, I clicked away from this. Um, okay, here we go. Um, with the other two, I plan to reach out to Ben this morning, so that's going to be my second one that I work on. Um, and then quickly after that, the um, uh, the the third one, the expanding the um, the contributing guide. Okay, sounds like you have a plan there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So Daniel is not here, so we'll just, I don't, I haven't seen him submit anything to GitHub. I have not made progress on mine. My initial plan was to make progress on some chaos stuff over the holiday. And um, like Georg, I decided to spend more time reading and less time working on the stuff. And so I haven't, I haven't really looked at it. I applaud, I, I applaud people on taking some time during the holidays. I think it's important. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is something I do sort of for fun, right? It's not, yeah. it's not work. I do most of it on my off work hours on the weekends okay. and mornings. But, um, but yeah, I just decided I wasn't going to do anything that was even, even sort of remotely like work. That's good. I, I, <laughs> big thumbs up for me on that one. <laughs> Instead, I just ate too much pie and drank too many margaritas. Oh my gosh, I ate so many cookies. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I came back and weighed myself and I was like, oh, oh no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, the next action item was yours, Georg, after we. Yep. So I had sent the emails to uh, his name, Jonathan, but I have not seen a uh, response. Um, he said he's going to put it on the team's agenda. Maybe I should. I'll follow up. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, and then the next one. This was looking at the metrics that are currently living in the metrics repository to see if we need to incorporate them. and. What I remember from our conversations in the past is that we decided to um, not merge anything back right now. And the metrics repository is not going away, so we are not losing anything. And mm -hmm. so I would actually like to take this off and just say we're done with this. Okay. So review of core contributors. Let's go to our repository right now. The list that we have is um, Matt and Nicole. You're both here. You deserve to continue to be on our core <laughs> contributor list. <laughs> the criteria is to participate at least once per month over a period of three months. I don't think we have anyone to add at this point. Okay. 
Um, okay. So should we talk about the goals then, even though we don't have edit permission yet? I tend to think maybe we should we should wait because it's hard to have a productive discussion when we can't edit the document. Agreed. Okay. okay. Then we move on to the next item, pull requests. Thank you, Don, for merging uh, the pull request. I had made a pull request on the uh, speak uh, event diversity, diversity event tickets. And uh, Don already accepted that. So here I'm gonna share the link also in the chat if anyone needs it. On the first one, 147, we are still waiting for Nithya to confirm. I think she doesn't use GitHub a lot, so you might want to just reach out to her via email and just get her to confirm that way. Yeah, I reached out initially, I'll follow up. And then at demographic uh, organizational affiliation, we had a little disagreement about this in the past. Um, I'm not I don't know what to do about this. Um, it's a one line change to keep track of where people are uh, employed as part of their demographic information. Um, I think it solves the issue that we currently don't have this uh, metric represented and that people care about it. But I also understand that there are, uh, that organizational affiliation is not really a minority issue. I tend to think we should add this to the, to the big list of metrics in the metrics repository. And maybe, maybe not just organizational affiliation, but maybe um, kind of expand it out a bit for for some of the metrics around organizational um, uh, organizational affiliation, like you know, percentage of people working for that organization and things like that. Like I think there's a whole set of metrics that go around organization, but I think maybe we should just add them to the metrics repository. So the way that I see it is we have those percentage metrics uh, when we talk about um speaker demographics or community demographics we have those percentages and what percentages to build and that's just a matter of what do we put as the groups that we are looking at um, and we can look at diverse not diverse in whatever way and one of them is affiliation so that's why i, I see this as a matrix mm -hmm. and we already have this in the metrics repository. That's where it comes from originally. I was just seeing if we can integrate it with what we have within the DNI group. I know we discussed this before. I don't, um, and Don and you and I, we have slightly different <laughs> Opinion. So maybe if uh, Nicole or Matt want to chime in. Well, I I clicked through and I'm looking at the discussion that was on um, December 10th and all of this. So <coughs> it it feels to me like whether or not a project or a community attracts a breadth of different companies participating is actually the indication of a project's health, but at a higher level than, well, than a minority or than a, 
minor than than what we typically think of as as underrepresented minorities. Um, it, it you know isn't there a, another like when when chaos tracks the overall health of a project it feels like it's up at that level mm -hmm. it, rather than at a at the diversity and inclusion work group level and it, it feels like it's at a at a larger umbrella level to me like yeah that's like that's for, actually yeah. oh go ahead nicole the, yeah, the, the work group growth, maturity, and decline of a project, right? Like, it would seem that that work group would be the, the one that tracks a, a health of a project at a higher level would actually be tracking, you know, is this project supported by more than just one or two or, or have more than as, as it's con uh, as a space of contributors have more than just one or two companies who are contributing to it, it, it would seem that that would be at, at, a, at a general health level and that DNI would be specific, a, a specific um, subset of that overall health of a project and its community. Sorry, Don, go, go ahead. No, I was just to say, I, I agree with you 100%. And what um, my, my concern with this is not that it's not important, because I actually think it's, I think it's critical. I think it's super important. And what I don't want to see is that it's sort of getting relegated to, like, just the diversity components of organizational affiliation but has a up what uh, this think that we're we're missing something in chaos um, in the way the two work groups are defined because we have we have diversity and inclusion and we have growth maturity and decline and we don't have anyone focused on the critical like overall project health metrics and so, so that's why I, I like the way Nicole sort of articulated that because I think I really think we sort of have a have a gap in the project because things there's, there's this whole set of things that are in the metrics repository right now that I think are super super important when it comes to project health but not really being worked on by by anybody and I don't want to see it get buried under diversity and inclusion um, because it's it's different and I, I think it'll I think it'll get sort of lost lost there like the the critical element of it but i don't necessarily know that it belongs in growth maturity and decline either because it's not necessarily i don't know i don't know what to do with it but i think we're missing something yeah and i i want to echo what you said about it being extremely important it's really critical to the health of the project yeah i don't know where it but it's, I, I feel like the closest thing would be, it, it feels like, isn't that where, how you know a project is not, well, one indicator that a project really maybe isn't healthy is if it's supported by just one company. And that, that's, that's why I thought, well, maybe that is part of like decline, which is what made me think, well, maybe that is growth, maturity, decline, but if it, if it, which is why it felt like it felt closest there, but if that's not right, then yeah, then maybe there, there is, feels like there is a gap. So I think Matt wants to say something. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree that, um, <laughs> that, there, that there's a gap, right? I wish I wish I could just make, wave a magic wand and all of those metrics in that huge metrics list were deployed <laughs> and had a home. <laughs> that would be super awesome. Um, so, but obviously that's not gonna happen. Um, so I guess the question is, what I hear is that this organizational diversity 
is of of the utmost importance, but it doesn't seem to have a a perfect home for it. Is that kind of right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, why I'm I'm curious why you say that this this isn't gonna happen. I mean we well, could all, form all the metrics in that list. That yeah. that huge that huge let me turn on my video here. That huge metrics list that we mm -hmm. have. Um like I, I wish that everything in there could be captured in some way, like right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that list far outstrips the capacity of the work groups right now. Mm -hmm. So the list has maybe a hundred different metrics in it. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's all. That, and so that's, okay. that's my only point. And, and so yeah. I think that the, the, the gaps just come from the work groups um, lack, and I don't mean this as a knock, but the, the limited capacity of the work groups mm -hmm. to be able to address each one of those metrics. Um, so maybe to the point of um, kind of what I'm listening to you say, Don, is that trying to identify, there appear to be some in that metrics list that are, are truly of, of critical importance. Mm -hmm. And sure, we can't address all hundred of them, um, but maybe there are a couple that do need to kind of rise to the top. And it's not that we need to identify them um, outright, um, but we we really do need to think long and hard as to, to how we get a metric like organizational diversity, mm -hmm. the type of attention that it, that it truly needs. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I sort of, I mean, I think I mentioned this before in kind of the weekly meeting, but I, and I think people got caught up in, in what I called it because I was talking about kind of like core metrics, but I think people got caught up in that. But what I wonder is if, if we do need sort of a third working group focused on some of these important metrics that kind of cross all of the, the, other, the other working groups. So I think that was originally the intention of the metrics committee to work on this overarching mm -hmm. work. And then the work groups, we started to really focus on a few metrics and implement them and drive adoption. So I'm okay with saying with regards to the pull request to just close it. And uh, the metric continues to live inside the metrics committee. And when someone has time to start implementing it, I know it's implemented widely from talking to people. Um, but when we are ready to formalize it within chaos, mm -hmm. then someone can do the work from the metrics committee. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, I would, I hate to say this, I, I would be happy to sort of help start something if we thought that a third group would be useful to look at some of this stuff. Um, if there was enough interest in so, it. Well, yes. My concern is people are already spread pretty thin with the two yeah. working groups Absolutely. and we would need to recruit, we would need to recruit some more people. But, you know, I know there were some people like, like Kate, who was kind of, she was sort of waiting for like the risk and value to get spun up because that's what she was interested in. So I'm wondering if spinning up kind of a, you know, I don't know, yeah. another group to look at some of this stuff would be, would be useful and whether or not we could get some other people involved. Can I ask a question? So then if, if there was another group, what would be that kind of overarching term? And I, I wouldn't hold you to this right now, right? <laughs> no, I mean, this, this is what I struggled with in the last meeting, right? I kept talking okay. about like core metrics, meaning oh. like, I, I don't know what to call it. I'm bad at naming things and naming okay. things. Yeah, me too. Hard. I'm super bad at naming. I'm really bad at titles <laughs> and naming things. So, right. um, but what we, it's just sort of, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. And uh, I mean, core, like, core was not the right word because people got hung up on the word core and then we never actually got to the, they didn't understand the discussion I was trying to have, I think. Um, but it's just like there's a, there's a set of common metrics. I don't know what you would call them, but there's a set of metrics that sort of span, span across working groups that are really important, but that aren't growth, maturity, and decline and aren't diversity and inclusion. Yeah, because I'm with you. It, it, it feels organizational diversity, right? feels yeah. a little, it feels out of band with what DNI has been doing for the last six months. Yeah. It just does. Yeah. I mean, sure, maybe you could argue that it fits there, but it just, based on the work that all of you have been doing, it just feels a little out of band for me. Yeah. And I feel like there's loads of other stuff in that list that probably fall in the same category. Yeah. 
that don't that it, the little square peg in the round hole kind of issue. You could mm-hmm. argue for it, but it's just yeah. a slight. Okay. What was the so value was the yeah. fourth working group? What mm-hmm. what was the purpose of that one? Um, so that was about trying to understand the impact that your project has. Okay. Um, what about, um, gosh, this isn't going to be right either, but what about health? Well, I want to almost say health metrics or that that's really what we're talking about, right? How to, how to determine healthy projects. Yeah, that might not be a bad way to frame it, like sort of like overall health health metrics, project health metrics. Georg, do you know if the CII badge does any of this stuff? No, they have uh, the bus factor. Okay. They're really focused on security. But not, not, sure. not and I, I mean, I know they have a component, which is like whether or not there's an underlying community you yeah. know, that would support the long, but it's not about organizations, affiliation. No. I don't remember a metric, no. Um, the other is, um, what was that, what's the velocity one? Isn't it CNCF does a velocity metric? Is that, is that organizations? The velocity metric is number of commits and number of people, I think. Okay, but it's not necessarily affiliation again. No. All right, well, I, I gotta go, but uh, I think all this is very well taken, at least yeah. for me. So, Do we, I hate to even propose this, do we talk about it tomorrow in the... Yeah in the main meeting again, maybe. Well, actually, um, yeah, tomorrow's because uh, we're, we're, we missed the first. I'm just, and I think a lot of people are off holiday. I'm just gonna yeah. kind of keep it as an open meeting. Okay. You know, I wanna talk about Google Summer of Code for chaos. Yep. Oh, good. So things like that. Because uh, organizational submissions are, I think, open or opening. They're opening next week. So. Okay. Okay, gotta roll, bye. All right, thanks, Matt. See you later. Thanks, Matt, bye. Okay, so I think we should close this and just or propose to the mailing list that we will not further discuss putting this in our DNI group and just assume organization affiliation is different from what we want to do. Okay, I left a comment on the pull request. Okay. And we have one more paid unpaid as a new demographic. This came from a from an interview that I did. Do we want to keep track of diversity with regards to whether people are paid to work on the project or not? Mm. I think it goes in the same direction as organizational affiliation. I struggle yeah. a little bit with, with paid, unpaid. Um, I, because it's hard to, it's, it's one of those metrics that's super hard to interpret. Um, because from a, from an inclusion standpoint, um, having a lot of unpaid contributors does not necessarily mean that your, your project is inclusive to people who are coming from underrepresented, um, populations because it tends to be people who have the money and the free time, um, to do this work on, on their own 
tend to be more of this, but I think it gets interpreted sort of the other, the other way, which is that it's good because anybody can contribute. So it's obviously more underrepresented people can get involved. And so I, I don't know what to do with this one. I think it's probably worth tracking. It's probably worth adding, but I, I struggle with the interpretation of this. Nicole, were you trying to say something? No, I was struggling with it too. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure. I think, uh, yeah, I, uh, with the interpretation and it doesn't necessarily mean what it pretends to mean. It's a little odd, I feel like, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm leaving a comment saying the interpretation of this metric would be difficult. Many unpaid contributors are not necessarily linked to a welcoming and inclusive community to minority groups. This metric is easily misinterpreted. Um, I agree with that. That's, that's not to mean that we couldn't add it, but maybe we add it with uh, some caveats about how it's a difficult to interpret metric. I mean, I think, I think it's, I, so I would be inclined to go ahead and add it, um, but maybe with some additional narrative around how it's um, easily misinterpreted and how it doesn't always mean that people from underrepresented populations are, are coming in as unpaid volunteer contributors. And realistically, okay. we should yeah. be paying people who are, people who are contributing should be being paid by someone to, to do it in an I ideal world. I know it's not the, the open source ethos, but um, you know, yeah. people, people who are working for free doing this stuff because they're not being paid by anyone is not, not exactly healthy either. At the open source summit in Edinburgh, I was talking to Chris from CNCF maybe, and he told me that as a foundation, they, do look at diversity and inclusion, but they have no influence over it because that is something the companies do. Mm -hmm. And so while well, the foundation can say, hey, all of your employees working on this seem to be very similar, not so diverse, um, it would be up to the companies to do something about it. Mm -hmm. um, so that speaks again that paid versus unpaid is not the deciding factor here. Yeah. Do I leave it open while we think about it a little more or think about how to... What I propose to is to um, add a to do to this or an action item to this pull request to add a disclaimer on okay. how this metric is difficult to interpret and then we can revisit it. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, okay. I added a comment. Okay, cool. Unless you had a different idea, Nicole. No, no, I think that sounds good. Awesome. Okay, so any other um, things you want to talk about? This is the miscellaneous section. <laughs> I, I don't have anything else. No, I don't either. No, um, I wanted to ask, you mentioned um, that uh, is, is Emma's participation, you mentioned a bit uh, towards the beginning of the meeting. Yes. Yes, Emma said that with her work, her focus is shifting, and so she will not be able to join us as often as she has in the past. Got it, okay, okay. All right. So in next week, uh, Don, you said you're 
not here. Nicole, do you yeah. want to be the facilitator? Sure. And facilitator means sending out the agenda ahead of time, reminding people that we meet, and then just leading the meeting. Yep, I'd be happy to. Okay, and I'll be the note taker. Okay. Okay. Yep. That brings That's us to good. the end of the meeting. Thank you, everyone. And I hope you have a good day. Good week. So okay. Good week or in two weeks. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.